Welcome back to Road Reality, my friend. We're not gonna get nerdy today. This is a vlog style video, kind of, sort of, showing what I did on my summer vacation. A whole week without YouTube, no watching, really. I watched like one video, but I was gone with the family for a whole week to the beach. And if you watch this video from last year, I took my Sony ZV-1 and my phone and I tried to compare them and it really made me appreciate the Sony that I had, and then I bought the Nikon. Spoiler alert, I did not take the Nikon with me this year. I did take the Sony ZV-1. Yep, I've got the uh, wind muff on it and the small rig cage. I, I took that, and I did take my phone. You know, I, I brought my phone with me, the Samsung Note 20, but I brought this bad boy. Yep, the GoPro Hero 12. I put the regular lens back on it. Can we get a focus on that? Oh, look at that. That's nice. Is that focused? That's pretty well focused, right? Yeah, it's dirty. This thing spends a lot of time on my bike. So no max lens mod, no media mod, just this and the floaty. And I won't show you the footage of me in a bathing suit tossing this into the water, but it did not seem to affect the Hero 12, so that's good. So for three days, I carried the GoPro in my pocket, and for three days, I carried the Sony in my pocket, and anytime I was close to the hotel, I kind of tried to carry them both, try to get a couple of comparison shots. But I really wanted to capture, a, not a ton of footage, but the family memories, and I wanted to do it in a way that I haven't done since I had my Hero 8 by taking pictures. So yeah, I took the GoPro Hero 12 here and I set it in linear mode and I took a bunch of photos. I had it set on HDR mode because this thing will record natively in HDR. And I gotta say, I was honestly really surprised by some of the stuff that I got from this. So without any further ado, I'm gonna talk a little bit, but I wanna show you the results of what this family trip got me. We started out in the minivan, crossing the Bay Bridge, but it was really rainy out that day. And yep, here, <laughs> I actually stuck both the Hero 12, and later on you'll see I stuck the Sony out of the moonroof on the minivan. It was kind of hilarious. This is just, it was too much fun, and it wasn't a ton of risk, so I figured I would do it. And honestly, you can see so much more detail on the Sony ZV-1, but the GoPro for low risk and all the extra stability, I think was quite worth it. And if you'll notice, I've got a little info card here showing what camera took each picture and I have not cropped in or anything. I, w I just wanted to show the original kind of whole image. And yeah, that cloud, that was nuts, right? It was just passing through the storm and into the clear weather. But the GoPro Hero 12, I thought did a real good job of capturing these images and this video. But the Sony, as usual, captured a more natural looking image. I mean, you're gonna get that because it's not shooting HDR, right? But even there, we're gonna compare the Sony ZV-1 with the GoPro, and you can see how much wider the field of view is. And here we have a side-by-side -side comparison showing how wide the field of view is, even in linear mode. You can even look at my shadow. I've got the cameras side-by-side. -side. Isn't that neat? What a neat shot. Then it was time for some low light. We've got the sun setting and then at night. And I thought the Hero 12 did a really good job for being like middle of the night there. But the next morning with the HDR, oh, absolutely phenomenal images. And just to keep uh, YouTube from not compressing it too far, I haven't added any movement in this one. It is my voice, my voice and the images. But the GoPro, look at that, oh, it does have a distance where it's too close to focus, but it does make you stretchy. That's the problem. You still have all the stretchiness, even in linear mode. Let's pause real quick here and say, hey, boop the like button and consider subscribing if you like this sort of thing. I don't do this often. I do it once a year, kind of test out a camera here or there or test something out. I always try to have kind of an ulterior motive when I go on a vacation. I, I just want to experience something a little bit differently with my gear. So my normal workflow is obviously disrupted. There's no motorcycles. And here we are. But this thing, 
with this uh with the linear mode it's still because it's such a fisheye lens under the cover here is a fisheye lens because of that it just stretches everything here and here and you'll see it in the video a little bit later too it just really stretches things out let's uh, get back to the b-roll we did some mini golfing and oh i just love this shot i mean you can't really put a dedicated camera through a hole in the fence that small right and it just came out great and then we've got all of our hdr footage it even recorded some half decent audio take a listen for the band Pretty I mean it might be lacking some detail but you just can't beat the stability of a GoPro it just absolutely was wild Working hard to get my feel So at this point, I pretended I was a drone and I walked through an arcade. <laughs> this was a ton of fun. I just kind of pretended the GoPro was a drone and rotated it and angled it around and everything and you kind of get that first person view sort of thing. Now you will notice a little bit of jittering because GoPro stability does depend on the amount of light coming in. So in a fairly low light environment such as this, you're gonna get a lot more jitters than you would otherwise. Plus, I'm not a light walker. As sunset, I got a few more really cool shots of the, of the boardwalk there, and then the beach, and then look at this walking footage. Look how well the GoPro stabilizes things as you walk along. Yeah, there's a little bit of bobble because I'm going up and down. I could add some stability and DaVinci Resolve, but I'm just not gonna bother. I think it looks pretty good as is, and these sand sculptures are really cool. And at 4K, you could zoom in pretty far and retain most of the detail. I just think it did a great job capturing things. Once again, more low light. And then the next day, boom, look at this. The clouds just absolutely look phenomenal. But then again, low light. But here we can see the stretching of everything in the sides. But the, the footage just absolutely turned out really good. I mean, if you have zero camera experience and even I consider myself a rank amateur, you can really get some amazing results out of the box with a GoPro. I mean, this is HDR mode and you never lose a ton of detail in myself, but here you go. This is actually ultra wide, so it's just exaggerating all the stretchiness and then whoop, there I am back in frame. <laughs> I had fun with that one. But then at night, I mean, this thing, the Hero 12, I think just, it just does a really good job with limited light. It's not gonna do great with no light, but really this is better than I expected. Another mini golf day, and we're gonna compare some of the GoPro footage to my phone in a minute, but these HDR images are just so well saturated and show all the details, just really, really neat in my opinion. And again, we're gonna have a couple of cool shots. This one shows all the color. You've got reds, greens, browns, whites, blues. And then we're gonna do a neat shot through an opening right there. 
And you can see how well it handles the transition from in the dark to in the light. Much better than previous years. Now we're on to the phone for one shot and then back at night. This is the ZV-1 at low light. Um, I think it does a pretty good job. I played with the exposure here a little bit and you can really tease things out. And then on our last day there, they're practicing for the air show. And I think that my phone captured a pretty good audio on this. The video is a little bit wonky. It's, it, you can't zoom in real well and it's hard to track things. Sony ZV-1, yeah, it really picks up phenomenal audio. And that's that. That was my trip. After spending three days carrying a GoPro around in my pocket, I thought it was really fun. I could easily pick it out of my pocket and get a shot. It probably doesn't boot up as fast as something like my ZV-1 here, which, you know, there, and I'm ready to record. It's actually a little bit slower than that, and I don't turn quick capture on because it wreaks havoc with other things occasionally. But suffice it to say, having either one in my pocket I thought was really cool. But having the GoPro there just kind of made it a non-issue. It's just like, oh, I don't care if it's raining or cold or wet or, you know, hot, whatever. Just I was at the beach with it a lot more. I don't like taking this to the beach, the salt air and everything. And it's kind of an expensive camera, whereas the Hero 12 here is just sealed up. So I can just, you know throw it in the water like I did and away we go. I didn't throw it in the salt water, I just threw it in the pool at the hotel and there you have it. So what did you think? You know, I realized the Hero 13 is out now. It wasn't when I went on vacation. It took me a while to get to this footage, but it, the sensor and everything is the same on the 13 as the 12. So kind of that's a preview of what you'd expect from a 13 if you were to try the same scenarios I did. So. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought. I hope you did like it. If you did, boop the like button. Maybe consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Go watch this one next. And don't forget the two mantras. One, you have a 100% track record of making it through a bad day. And two, do something nice for yourself every day. John out.